our suburban communities is a form of urban repair. There was a generation of thinking that was all about separating uses. You work in one place, you live in another place. Uh, was based on the assumption that everybody would drive, full stop. Everyone's going to have a car, everyone's going to drive. Well, we know that cars are costly. We know that that creates incredible traffic congestion in cities. So the urban repair that we're engaged in right now is really about looking at those areas of the city that are missing some uses, might be employment, uh, might be community facilities that need to be added into the urban fabric of the city in order to create a complete community so that there's an option of doing more things within walking distance of home or a short transit ride or a short cycle of home. So the vision in the 50s and 60s was that you would work in the downtown, you would get in your car onto a super highway, you know, music blaring, a nice quick ride, it would only be, you know, 10 kilometers or 15 kilometers that you could do very quickly to then get to your suburban neighborhood where you could have, you know, a big lawn and a big house far away from the constraints of the inner city. And of course, that dream actually never hold, held. It, it never happened, it never delivered. The minute that we started designing communities and separating out the uses, connecting them by highways, assuming that people would drive everywhere, almost instantly the urban fabric of the city was filled with congestion. You know, the new model is really about saying, well, wait a minute, um, let's work with nature, let's actually recognize we want to bring nature into the city, we want wildlife in the city, we want trees in the city, that this is a critical part of creating a livable urban environment, uh, as opposed to kind of the city noir, the, you know, concrete jungle. So affordability in a rapidly growing city that's highly desirable and is attracting people from literally all over the world and capital from all over the world really creates some serious challenges. New York has this problem, London has this problem, Paris has this problem, and unfortunately now Toronto has this problem as well. And it really speaks to the importance of strong public policy to actually respond where the market cannot.